Hey, this is Tracy Lewis with Stuff and Things, and it is that time for Paper Pumpkin. Alas, I was not in the in the vehicle when Hub picked this up for me. He was off to visit his parents, so we're just going to skip the whole road trip part of the video and go right into the unboxing. This Paper Pumpkin, as I said last month, is uh, a holiday card box, which is awesome. It's called Joy to the World. It fits right in with my Winter is Coming Wednesday series that I am doing. And perhaps a few of these will become part of my Christmas cards. Just Jade is the spot. Uh, we got a message about help okay now we've got some translations and help you I'm not sure if this means we're getting more mine is in English ah so when we open this up, I believe that these gold foil elements are going to come in three different languages. That is what this is telling me. So if you haven't opened your box yet, this is a little bit of a spoiler. And I'm very excited. I haven't seen anything with this kit so far, I, aside from knowing that it was going to be cards, uh, because I looked at the flyer for from last month. We've got some beautiful white tissue paper for me to add to my tissue paper stash. The stamp set is, has a beautiful Merry Christmas. Love that. Joy. Sending to you and yours to the world and an inside sentiment wishing you a very happy Christmas filled with fun and laughter. A floral element, some dots and a wreath. So, oops, I went the wrong way. I believe the materials are for eight A2 size cards. I'm already seeing that the card bases are crumb cake colored on both sides both the front and the back, so I will be able to cut them in half. We have some dimensionals, double-sided adhesive dots. Indeed, we have large foil die cuts in the three languages. Some very nice long label foils, two different sizes of sweater die cuts. Let's see what the envelopes look like. Envelopes have wording on the inside. I bet they're all the same. Yep. And how deep. So this is really spectacular. They printed them all the way down to the bottom. So that means I can cut this envelope apart and make at least a horizontal background piece. So I love when they do that for us. For those of us who love alternatives, then we have some stitched labels, large rectangles, small rectangles. And then I have, oh, we got more stuff. So these are what the bases look like absolutely beautiful could cut this into strips pieces extend it quite a ways I believe with the way they they did the uh, foil design and of course the background can be cut off as well and used in pieces we have wreaths flowers uh, many of them looks like ten flowers five wreaths and some twine 
and I'm going to go away now. I will not be doing the actual created card. I might peek at it, but I suspect I will, as usual, always end up changing it because that is what I do. So stay tuned for alternatives. I will be back shortly. All right, I'm back. And this particular segment is going to talk about the added materials and supplies that you can consider. So I'm going through that exercise and I'm also going to do a simple stamping and show my simple stamping ones that I have finished. I left one to be able to stamp with you guys. So first off, I wanted to match the metal. So I brought out the brushed metallics. I have one of the little stitched patterns and I have matched it to the middle color. Uh, I'm not sure if this darker is truly a copper. It's not quite a copper, it's just like a darker. And then this is more of a, of a pale gold. So I believe you could actually get away with the light or the middle. And then the darker to me is too copper. And I even brought out a piece of copper. See, so, so this isn't quite a copper. So this is the copper foil. And that is just too orange. So for your foils, these two metallic or brushed metallics will work. I also brought out, I usually do embellishments last, but because these are Christmas cards, I wanted to give you options and ideas. So this is my pile. And for the trim, you do get the cherry cobbler. It's a very fine thread looking trim. I'm going to, without revealing what designs I've finished, I'm going to dig out just the double. I made a double bow. I tend to like double bows. And then this linen is a triple bow to give them more, more meat. And then this is the gold trim. It's a combo pack. I think it comes with the Forever Fern. I actually am almost out of it. And I had to buy a second um, spool. In fact, here's all I have left. You can see that I'm down to only so many wraps and I can see the bottom. So those are the threads that I think are a nice match. You could even do, uh, there's a gold quarter inch. I don't know if I have it close by in my pile. And it would go as well. I see it in here. Let's see if I can dig it out and not waste time. All right. So this gold would also work. You could, even with this um, cherry cobbler, and same with the, there's a whisper white with, I mean not whisper white, very vanilla with gold. You could color that with your blends or your dye markers, or even re anchor in a baggie. So there's really a lot of different ways you can go trim wise. <clears throat> now let's see, I've got the metallic pearls, the hoops, these clear water drops would be all right. Not the best. Gold glitter and the faceted. This is what I'm going to use to dress mine up. And I hadn't thought about... Now, this is real red, so you would have to take your darkest marker. I think there's a cherry cobbler marker you can use, in fact, on that to darken it up. One more, the doily, the square doily. And I have that in vellum. So I brought out a sheet of vellum. I also brought out, and I will show what these look like. Here is a piece of the cut off paper with some, the doily and you can see the hoop would go perfectly. 
So here is crumb cake. Let's see what a good match the crumb cake is on crumb cake. It's a very good match. And this is a colored um, finished crumb cake where this is uh, the paper color is the pulp is actually crumb cake. So you can put this on a crumb cake mat. This is the cherry cobbler mat. This is the just jade mat. Again, to conserve and be efficient with your papers, don't forget to cut cut something out of the middle here with a die. Hopefully you have dies or punches that you can make use, like this one I've already used, and this one I've already used, and I always stick them right back in my container for the color. And I think that this is a very wide variety of materials. I'm not even thinking with what I've done so far that I'm going to need any additional supplies like die cuts. I might use the rectangle, stitched rectangles, because you do get stitched rectangle labels. And if I run out of these labels, there's two sizes. That's the small size. And there's the large size. So if need be, I can cut my own stitched shapes. And I wanted to show you, I've done a couple. That I'm going to use just the green. So you have this wonderful wreath. and a flower and then you've seen the joy and the back here is like a background with the joy at an angle the trick to making this look as natural as possible is your very first one should start off the page and then you work out don't start in the center because it'll look too too controlled so start off this like this is the one I started with and then I started working around it to make it look natural. Don't forget to do the corners. I could even do a little bit of a J here in this corner if I wanted. So that's two of them. This one could have any number of little... I could do the flower. You could do flowers repeated like the joy. I don't know that the wreath would... See, the wreath isn't going to look right. So we're going to do the wreath and then this is the sentiment that says wishing you a very happy Christmas filled with fun and laughter for the inside and I want to ink up just the top two rows and put that below the wreath on a white and I was going to do that with you because I do get asked if I could actually do some of the stamping and the creating of the focals with you guys so you could see see me at work and I'm looking for my green. So this time I'm probably not going to make as many combinations. I will probably go ahead and do some mixing and matching so that they're... I always like to try to hit the teens now. That's kind of a personal goal. And we will see if I can do that. This one's going to be a lot quicker. Now, last month had all of those embellishments, all of the little die cuts that took over an hour just to separate. And then I had to I, I put them in one order and didn't like it. So then I had to get out more cups and everything to keep all of the colors separate. I didn't like grouping them. So there's a wreath, hand-centered, no measuring. This is a full A2, so if you have a full A2 and you're fairly good at centering, I would say just go for it and then you can trim down to whatever uh, matting dimension you want it to be. Or you could leave it full size on these simple ones. If, if you're just uh, wanting to get, send people out, if you're sending, you know, tons of cards and you just want to go with simple ones, this will work. All right, so what I did is I just inked up the top two rows. And I'm going to center it. What I'm noticing now, when you get these new photopolymer ink, I mean, stamps, 
I've heard of people, I've never done it myself, but when you see the color separating, that's because of the whatever finish they have on here. Uh, might be an oily finish for when they... Uh oh, I can see I messed up. But if I would not have messed that up, this would be a very nice card. So there you can see I should have looked more carefully and cleaned off with a paper towel this bottom part or even with my chamois. So let's do that again. I don't like making mistakes. So I'm going to look for my chamois and have it ready. In fact, I need to clean off that third row. My chamois is almost black completely with use. I love it. Use it all the time. All right, so I'm being more careful here. And before I stamp, All right, and this time I'm gonna not do the wreath first. Oh, and I see a little tiny bit, so let me fix it. It of course requires a little more effort, but I wanna show you this technique because it's really easy to get more use out of your stamps. See, it bubbled a little bit because I needed to keep, now I've been just keeping the ink really fresh, but I took some time when I actually cleaned it. So be sure to double check that you're not bubbling. You can actually see it when you look at it through the, through this way, you can see it. And this one looks good. I've used this a few times now, so it already doesn't have the bubble effect because I've wiped off the material, whatever material they have. So there is a nice, clean and simple card. One color. There's the mistake. And again, this bubbling happened because I wasn't fast enough. I spent the time to clean and didn't do a careful re-inking again. So the wreath worked out perfectly because I, I inked it and stamped it. So that's some tips for you. I will now go away. I'm going to finish up some designs and then come back and we'll do a final kind of a, a preview. And then in the end, I'll have a showcase where I do the mix and match and hopefully get into the, the teens like I like to get. That's a, a personal goal. And I'll probably take this one and I'll do something more with it. There's um, in the stamp set, There's these three little dots. Maybe I'll just do it here with you guys. Using just a jade. And there you go. Clean and simple. If you had to do 50 of those, you could do them very quickly. Now, if you really needed to do 50, I'm thinking the Stamparatus would be the tool of choice so that that would be super duper fast. The main thing I'm using my Stamparatus for right now is the lines on the for the envelope from the ornamental envelope set. I have that all set up and I have been doing lines on all of my envelopes because I do not write in a straight line and I love having straight lines to follow, which is great. So stay tuned. I'll be back very soon with the final mix and match of the focals with the backgrounds and we'll call this one done. All right. I found some more prep ideas that I wanted to go through with you. So you have the word foil sheet, and this is a very uh, sturdy foil sheet. Now it does collect fingerprints, so be ready to clean off your fingerprints, but it really is sturdy stuff. And there are parts of this, when you have all the words out, that you can utilize. 
for instance, you've got this strip. You could even make it longer if you needed to. You have this really skinny strip that you could incorporate. And then I don't know if anybody else has thought of it, but you know, you can uh, punch if you have, like I have a five petal punch, a small flower, this area, or a star die from the star dies, stitched stars. Uh, this area is long enough you could get something out of, and there's two sheets of these. So there's quite a bit of material here to still be used. And then I was thinking, here's all of the foreign words. Let's say you want to make up a word, but you don't know what words you can make. I would separate these and play Scrabble with them and make up words. Uh, you know, you could do either a person's name, you know, you have to, of course, live within the bounds of whatever letters you're, you've gotten. So I would place them all in alphabetical order and see if you can come up with some fun words. Let me know if you can think of any fun words. Please add them to the comments. Then you would just use a drop of mono glue or the, the multi-purpose liquid glue. I use just a teeny tiny drop. I, I just get the just a drop and I touch it and that's all it needs for these to be adhered. Little tiny drops. See what you think and what kind of fun words you can come up with that are Christmas related. Uh, worst case, you can always do a family member's name if it happens to work out. But I am just curious. So I will probably cut all of these out and then I will put them in a baggie for later use. And of course you have some smaller, for the longer words, you have smaller letters and then you have these larger letters. You could probably do, because you have two sheets of these, you could do XOX. You could even put it on the inside of the card. So that is what my thoughts are on these gold foil words that are in the foreign words. I'm trying to get use of every little bit. And then there's the sweater pattern. So you can take your sweater and you can rough up the edges. You can take your green and I don't have out a clean, I'm going to use red just because I have the red out. Take your cherry cobbler. So I've already got this roughed up, but if I wanted to make the pattern stronger, I would just very lightly along the top of the pattern. You can see how that's coming out. And then you can go ahead and darken the edges as dark as you want. You can keep the edges smooth. I just roughed these up so you could see what it would look like roughed up. There's two sizes, by the way. Uh, there's this thinner, more square-shaped one and the larger rectangular one. You could cut now if I have this all sponged, you could cut a couple of different shapes in a cherry cobbler cardstock and make a nice arrangement. I have not actually done that yet, but I might just do that for the final reveal. And remember, most it doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to cover this with other elements. So don't don't be overly paranoid about it. Just get in there, get some color on it. And now the sweater pattern really stands out. And lastly, I wanted to talk about strips. So this metallic pattern, uh, the, I mean the brushed metallic, goes in a certain direction. Depending on how you feel about it, if you want to put it 
on matching the direction. This is the vertical one. Then there's the horizontal one with the horizontal lines. If you say wanted to have uh, the edge show. Now to me, I am not bothered by the fact that the brush is going vertically, but keep that in mind if you're if you have these pieces and you're going to trim them that if you want it to match the direction of the stitching in the gold on the crumb cake that you need to trim your paper accordingly. So you get two sheets of each. So for me, I would do one vertical and one horizontal. Uh, this, I've only done one strip and I did it vertical because mostly I do vertical cards. So that's that how to and more tips. And I think I'm going to go ahead and reveal to you what I've got so far. Oh, except one last thing. So there's these four strips. They're just kind of random thicknesses. And with these strips, if you wanted to have a thin gold foil edge around this piece, you have these four strips. You can add your seal to the back and apply them whatever, whatever thickness you want and then snip off the overage. So like if I did this, I would snip off a little bit of the extra top and the extra side, and then in the end I would have uh, all four sides, and I've only used up these strips and still have a bunch more strips. So I've been doing that lately, and it really saves on material and makes a really nice looking card without having to use up an entire piece of foil. The one thing with foil too is that if you're thinking you would in, in do a die cut in the middle of it, it'll pick up, if you don't have clean plates, it will pick up and indent every little bit of your foil. So foil is something to treat very carefully to make sure you don't accidentally ruin it uh, and then are unable to use it. Okay, so I've got my letters here. I'm, here's my extra pieces I cut that I can utilize. So those are going to go in my pile. Ah, one last element, the top of the envelope. The and the size of these. These are not A2 size cards, by the way. They are six inches long by four and an eighth. So there's some custom size. There's probably a, a letter code for it, and I don't know what it is. But what that means is that your envelopes are, are nice and long. So the top of this that has the pattern in it, if I have one handy, I'll grab it. I was able to make, and I will go ahead and show you. I was able to make a full width, half half inch, no, one inch wide by five and a quarter across the top and still have some left over for a thin one. So don't just throw away this top piece of your envelope, even if you've used the bottom part. Uh, because I will show you what I did with it. it. It actually is plenty long enough to be used. All right, so let's go ahead and get into what I've got so far. So starting with a fairly simple design, you've got your words. This is an extra piece right here. If you take, I went ahead and roughed up a crumb cake here. This is distressed, by the way. It has some white showing, and I believe that's intentional and it looks really cool. So, if you take this strip, this strip is because it's six inches long, to get it to five and a quarter, which will give you a one eighth inch mat on each side, you end up with this extra bit. And then this gold foil is from the sheet. It's one of the leftover pieces. I believe it is this piece that I showed you cutting off below the label, the fishtail label. All right, so to make some very simple designs using the foil words, you could do that add the add a bow of some variety either that bow oh and now I guess it's buried there's the non-gold bow 
the linen trim bow and then you can just add three dots and that card is done. You could take these same elements over here, pop up the same direction, this, this half inch piece that's getting lost. I would pop that up. Say it's popped up with the piece. You could make piece be at an angle with the gold because they come in really large. See how big they are? So you could have three, two large ones, a medium, or a large, medium, and small, and just randomly place them and put it on either one of these. You could, you could also take this and put it on the crumb cake that I showed you. I think I have it already used here. But there it is. Okay. So you have a tone on tone, all crumb cake, piece card. So these are just the very simple, starting with the more simple designs. So I like that. You could use Joy. I already have Love in the pile. Instead of this, you could take the one of the long foil strips and do this effect. And then when you have this effect, you then get to cut off some of this and add another strip of the stitched to another treatment. All sorts of ways that you can play with just the crumb cake color combination with some foil and the big words. The next is getting a little fancier using all of the elements of the envelope. So the next two are envelope pieces. And this one I brushed. I did not distress. I just brushed on some of the cherry cobbler, which is why I had the sponge out. And just make any arrangement you want with any of the foil words. And if you don't want the words, it looks great. Again, for the final embellishing, you can add this. You've got the red bow. You got the word joy or love or peace. Let's see if peace will fit. I haven't even tried. There you go. So awesome design here using all the little pieces. The only thing that's popped up right here, two pieces, the Merry Christmas and the flower. Now I'm going to take some of these pieces back because I might need them. Now the other part of the envelope that I was talking about, which is the inside of the flap, the top flap, I got one inch out of it and then I trimmed uh, metallic and then I tore some vellum. So you end up with a really nice, you could pop up whatever layers you want here. Then I've got the Merry Christmas. I've got the flower. You could put the flower over here. You've got either the red bow, the gold bow, or the linen, which is buried. And then you've got your dots. They're gems, actually. Gilded gems, as they're called. So that makes a fun card.
This is another showing the with the red, and you can also do this with the just jade. You can also do your mats when you trim down your gold foil. You've got the two different colored mats, full A2 size. So I cut this down to four and a quarter by, I mean, four by five and a quarter. And then another option that is awfully cool, easy to do, and you could do. 50 cards. You could take crumb cake and do a nice clean and simple with gold heat embossed and there's where my linen bow went. And I had, this is my messed up one. I actually got interrupted and my Versamark sat so this side dried a little bit because I had to run off and take care of something. Oh, I've made this full size, so this does not... Oh, except I trimmed that down. So I was going to show you a crumb cake. Tone on tone. And that pretty much concludes this month's paper pumpkin I'm going to mix and match and do a nice big showcase. I might even try to arrange, cut these up and arrange some words because I do want to get them stored away in a baggie with the, the different letters for closer to Christmas time. I will probably, now I'm doing my Winter is Coming Wednesday, and I will probably incorporate some of these cards in, maybe four or so. Uh, one of the things I do for my subscribers is I send them every six months you get sent a sampling of three to six let's just say it just depends on how many extras that I have of my different paper pumpkin alternatives that I do I finish them up so I can't use all these because I want to save them to be able to send to my customers uh, down the road when I'm packaging up their six month free gift from me. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them on the YouTube channel. If you have any ideas of fun words to, to um, turn these into, please let me know in the comments. That I would love to know, and I'm sure other subscribers would love to know. I will have all of the supplies on my that I use today on my blog article. And don't forget that I do have a, a rewards, or I, I call it the perks, the Paper Pumpkin Perks program. So it's the 4P program that every three month, every third month of your cycle, you get a thank you card, and every six months, you get a selection of the cards that I have made that I have shown here and in these videos. Have a great day. See you next month, and thanks for watching.